So we discussed this before we went on, and this is something that is going out on Facebook, I believe, over the weekend. It's something that I wrote a little bit about of, and did a video on about how the NBA is so different from the National Football League and how the NBA wants their players to do it. Adam Silver sends out a league-wide memo that says to the players, we appreciate your activism, continue mm -hmm. on, keep doing it. Stephon Clark gets murdered, sorry, executed in cold blood. The Sacramento Kings owner, who I'm not a huge fan of because he's, he's this wacko that mm -hmm. like, real quick, he just thinks like, what we should do is have four guys on defense and we should have one guy on offense and we want to score 195 points a game. Like that's his philosophy. Yeah. And you wonder why the Kings haven't been good since Chris Webber left. Exactly. So on top of that, he did something very noble, which I love which was uh, before the game, the game was delayed just a slight bit because protesters outside of, uh, I think it's Amway Arena in Sacramento where the Kings play. And he said that he appreciates um, the protests. Mm -hmm. uh, he appreciates the players protesting. We are all in this together. Mm -hmm. we are gonna, and I'm thinking like, there's no way we would ever see this in an NFL stadium, ever. Never. So from your perspective of writing Kaepernick Effect, seeing everything that's gone on, why is the NFL so incredibly backward while the NBA is so progressive? Um, it's, something, it's something behind the scenes, you know what I mean? Um, I, I don't know those guys, but to me, like I, I told you earlier, it seems like it's like a mob, it's like a mafia. You can't speak on certain things. It's almost like a gang, you know, in, in, in the streets in LA, coming from where I come from, you have South gangs. South Central. Yeah, South Central, and you have gang rules. And the certain gang rules you can't speak on certain things. Same thing in the NFL. You know what I mean? If you do speak on certain things, then you'll get disciplined for that. And this is what's going on with the NFL. The same thing. They're running everything they're doing. It's like a street. You know what I mean? Um, and whoever backs you, if you stand for something, whoever backs you, they in trouble too. So this is like a different level of corruption. It's like Wall yeah. Street corruption. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, a couple NFL players hit me up on... Um, and, you know, if some didn't, and if some, you know, some of the ones that didn't, I, I truly believe that they feel like their job is not secure enough in the NFL to stand behind it, but they want to stand behind it. Right. You know what I mean? And that's a scary thing to know, like, you know, um, I have this platform, I'm a star, I can be able to, you know, talk to people, change things, you know what I mean? Um, even the view that these kids have, you know, um, coming from the hood, just the, the view they have on everything. We, sh we should be able to have these stars talking because these are the people that the kids look up to. Right. The kids not looking up to, you know, the, the, the corporate guy who has a suit on. We don't know them. Of you know what not. I mean? Yeah. yeah. We, we see the stars on TV, and to see somebody like Kaepernick going this hard and standing behind something, why wouldn't you want the kids, the youth, to see that? Because, my opinion, is because they want to have this new wave of young potential NFL talent. If the NFL, of course, is as dominant as it is today, which I don't think it will be mm -hmm. because of what we've learned and what the NFL did not want us to know, about head injuries, Facts. about CTE, about Richard Dent, about yeah. Junior Seau, about many others that we're slowly learning mm -hmm. about. So what I think they're trying to do is not have those players projected upward mm -hmm. and rather keep them either behind the scenes, silenced, or out of the league because then that's setting the precedent for what these new players and new kids that are coming in are going to be like, okay, well, I got to talk the talk and walk the walk. I can only say this and that. Like Orlando Skandrick, yeah. who I think is, he wants to say so much more, but when Jerry Jones said, any player that protests, they're going to be suspended, they're going to be benched, what have you, they asked him about it, and all he said was, no comment. It was like a Drew Rosenhaus T.O. Mm -hmm. interview, like, next question, no comment, no comment. But you knew that he wanted to say something, because then at the end of it, they asked him, oh, well, why are you wearing uh, pink cleats? And he's like, oh, this is something that we could speak up for. And it was breast cancer awareness yeah, because that's something that's certified with the NFL. And exactly. that's why you see pink jerseys in the NFL shop. Man, it's all about the money with them. Yeah. Everything is all about the money. You know what I mean? If they don't own it, can't be a part of it. You know what I mean? So they how don't. do we break through? Does it take, does it, like, it, okay. It, it, take, it takes more Kaepernick's. Okay. Um, it takes people doing this on a day to day and not forgetting and not stopping. You know what I mean? And, you know, um, the people who do believe got to continue to back these people like Kaepernick. You know what I mean? Um, we've seen Kaepernick on TV so much, you know, and it slowed down. Like, we don't see him, so, but I see him behind the scenes. 
you know, going to certain places. I ran mm -hmm. into him before, you know, so um, he's still doing what he needs to do, but they're not showing it. They still, now it's like he's gone. You're talking about mainstream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mainstream is, um, the reason why I bring that up is because that's what all these kids have. You know what right. I mean? Everything now is mainstream. It's, yeah, you turn on YouTube and it's just right there. Um, I feel like... Right, why do you think Lil Yachty is so popular? Because he's being pushed. Right, right. it's wild. For um, their agenda. So yeah, we just need more more Kaepernick's, man. You know, some people that's not afraid to lose their job and fight for something that they believe in because they know some good karma is going to happen. So I remember Max Kellerman saying something about Jackie Robinson. And I think it was Pee Wee Reese who he mentioned, I'll always, I'll always remember him saying this and just being ingrained in history, is that when Jackie Robinson was dealing with N-word this, N-word that, and it was very, very tough, as we all know for him, he put his arm around him and it was an act of solidarity that we're in this together. Mm -hmm. Does it take a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers? Does it take somebody, well, not Tom Brady, but someone like Tom Brady? Like, yeah. we know about the MAGA hat that he, <laughs> yeah, of course. but so screw that. But like any other dominant white quarterback, does it take him doing it for a full season, potentially? Yeah. Yeah, but then what would the hard. owners do about that? Let's say that he is dominant and yeah, he's see, great. See, that's the thing. When you force, when you put pressure on some, something, it's, it goes, it's like a domino effect. One person does it, it's like, oh, they, that's not powerful enough. We can't, we're not going to stop what we're doing because of one person. You know what I mean? You get 10 star quarterbacks. Now you, you're going to end up losing money. Right. You know what I mean? Now it's, it's bigger than that. We got to, you know what I'm saying? So it, Doesn't it, it hurt, though, that a lot of the NFL fans, I mean, let's be honest, are conservative-minded thinkers? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So then, so then like, I, I, look, look, we're all on the same side here, as yeah. we know. I'm just trying to think about this a little differently. Like, I get why the owners don't want this to come out, because a lot of those signs that some brought to games, I remember seeing one in Cleveland that was like, we stand together. And then on the bottom, he wrote, we stand with Trump. And like, that's the sort of people. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's everybody, obviously, yeah. but I'm saying it's a good chunk that the NFL doesn't want to insult. But so while the, they're protecting their business, they're also hurting it at the same time. Right. But that's the whole point of like, it's a free country. He wants to hold his Trump sign. I want to stand right next to him and and, and hold my black fist sign up. You know what I mean? It's, uh, that's 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 what I'm saying. Like, if they get that, if they get to do that, and everybody gets to hold their sign up. So if, I don't I don't feel it would be a problem. It's, it's only a problem when that guy gets to hold his sign up and, and then I don't get to hold mine up. Right. You know what I mean? Totally. So, yeah, you know, one team can't, you can't give the other team more than you give this team. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I do get that with the signs. It, it, it would be a lot of, you know, more drama, but people want to speak out. Okay, so here's what I just thought of. So the Carolina Panthers, right, up for sale. Why has it, not even slowly, it's sudden, rather. Mm -hmm. Diddy was interested in ownership, uh, Stephen Curry was interested in partial ownership. Where have those rumblings even gone? Like, is this something that the white fraternity of NFL owners do not want to happen because it'll radicalize in their own minds? I'm not saying it will. Mm -hmm. It'll radicalize in their own minds NFL owners for good. Mm -hmm. They won't be able to keep it that way. Yeah. Is this something they're trying to prevent? Definitely. This is, um... It seems like it. It's like, um... And I don't want to say it like this. Well, you know. Can I tell you something? That TYT logo... That means you can say whatever you want. Say less. As, as, yeah. as long as you're keeping it true and yeah. pure, doesn't matter. Um, it's like, so me growing up in the hood, I would go to places like the suburbs to play basketball. Me and my boy, uh, black kid, he played basketball. Richard Cheney Jr., he went to Utah, transferred to Troy. Mm -hmm. um, we would go hoop at like spots where it's like nothing but a white guys hooping or nothing but Asians hooping and they wouldn't let us play you know what I mean really yeah the two black guys come or like so one time I walked to the we came to the park and we seen it was 10 white guys that were getting ready to run a five on five mm -hmm. they all got out the car grabbed their bags and all that went to the court we were walking from far away so they didn't see us we seen them get out go to the court we get there and we asked could we get next everybody grabbed their stuff was like oh we about to go and they left Really? So, yeah. So, so like, who won one-on-one -on -one after that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't give a shit about it. Right. Um, so why, why do you think they did that? They're afraid to lose? They're afraid to be tested? It's, it's, it's everything. That, we black. Um, you know, they had a mentality like these guys might try to do something to us. You know, it's just 
Yeah, it's it's weird, man. You know, I, I I've never really growing up where I come from. It wasn't mixed like that. It was all black. You know what I mean? Some Spanish, but for the most part, it was all black. Mm -hmm. So I didn't hang around um, any white people until I got older. And how old were you? You think? Uh, nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Um, and. You know, I, I did have a mentality that, you know, this is how white people is, are going to act towards you until I actually got some white friends. And then I became, you know, we became cool. And I'm like, damn, he does the same thing I do. Right. We listen to music, we chill, we do, we talk sports. It's like, it's no different. You know what I mean? Um, so why are we getting treated like we different? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With certain, certain situations, you know. Um, and that was, that's another thing when I brought up in the Kaepernick effect, like you got your gun out and you shooting because I scared you. If you're a professional, you shouldn't be able to, you know, just shoot your gun because you're scared. You're supposed to know you can't pull this gun out and shoot this and pull this trigger unless your life is in danger. Mm -hmm. If my back is turned, how in any way do you feel like you're in danger and you have the gun? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you get to do it, how come I can't do it? Vic Benza said, ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. He did, he did a song called 16 Shots about Laquan McDonald. Yeah. And he got gunned down in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, along with many others that have mm -hmm. fortunately been killed by the, uh, the cops in Chicago. And what I thought was pretty troubling was there's a pattern here of it's not just one, or bullet yeah. is what I'm saying. Um, it's not just one, it's, it's in the teens. It's even more than one, mm -hmm. which is troubling. Because as you said, a police officer, it seems, I haven't gone through police training, but it seems like what they want to do is protect themselves at all times. Fine. There are many other ways to handle it than shooting someone 16 times or 20 times for holding a cell phone. Shoot him in his leg if you have to. He's going to fall. I, trust, I promise you that. <laughs> shoot right. him in his leg and then go arrest him. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, what is all this, this chest shots? And, and like, I don't get it, man. You should be a, a professional to have good enough aim, because this is what you guys do mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis, to where you can, if you needed to take somebody down and you felt a little scared, you can shoot him in his knees. Right. Are you pleased with social activism in the NBA right now? Uh, definitely. I, like I got a 10, what would you say it is? The players, how they... Uh, they're wearing T-shirts. They're going on Twitter. It's, it's 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 at an eight or nine for me. Okay. I like how the teams are backing each other. You know, one player doing it on the team, the rest of the players are going with it. Nobody's afraid. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, and because you're backing up something that's real. Like I see if somebody came in and is like, yo, and come in the locker room. I need you guys to go back up these, you know, pink sweaters. You know what I'm saying? That that has a, a candy bar on it. You know, somebody might be like, I don't want to, you know, do that. You know, but this is something real. It's people dying. Nobody's saying nothing. The cops are killing these kids, and when they kill a kid, it's like, oh, it's, it's, it's okay. You know they cops. Right. You know, they, we're going to send them to another state and, and suspend them for a year, and he'll have his job back next year. He's, he's good. But when somebody else kills a cop, they're animals. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why? How come the human being that has a uniform on and a badge, he's not an animal when he kills somebody that was innocent? But once an innocent person does anything to a cop, you punch on the cop. You might be the, one of the most craziest dudes in the world. Mm -hmm. That's how they're gonna make you make you look. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's it's not fair, man. Right. So could you maybe say that some of the athletes that are in like the top five, not all time, but right now in their current landscape, could you say that they could potentially be doing more? And if so, if if you answer yes, what could they be doing? Um. Definitely, man. Um, but me being in the industry and knowing how it goes, it's so hard to be in certain places. And a lot of these players don't want to just give money. You know what I mean? A lot of players want to be involved. So it's just about them having the time and, and, and you know, making time to do it. You know, it's a lot of times these guys going out to the club and spending a whole bunch of thousands and, you know, having fun with their friends where they could have been. Um, at a YMCA that, that night, you know what I mean? Talking to the kids, giving away free backpacks and free clothes and free shoes. It's just certain things, you know, that, that we could be doing and, and, you know, changing things, giving out jobs to, to the kids so right. they could stay away from the, the street activity, the ones that, that are living in poverty like that, you know what I mean? Let me ask you a question. How old are you? Um, 33. Okay. Well, you don't look it, so congratulations you. to you. Uh, so you've been in the club many times. Yeah. Is there a bigger waste of money than the club? Mm. Mm. Drugs. 
<laughs> that would be the only thing. Yeah. Yeah, if, you know. If yeah. yeah. But I mean, if you associate drug with marijuana, then I don't label that a waste, my friend. I, I wasn't speaking on marijuana. All I mean, right, all right. Marijuana, all right. not even a drug to me. All right, amen. Uh, <laughs> I, I, this, this is just my own thing. I think there's no bigger waste than going to uh, a club and getting bottle service because you can get that bottle for like 20 bucks at Ralph's. And then on top oh of that, you know, you know what else you could do? You could bring in a flask, but that just look, doesn't yeah. look bougie because you need to fit this stupid ass brand and vibe of mm -hmm. a culture of going to the club. So then you're going to be frowned upon. On top of that, you know what else is a humongous waste of time and money? Going to the strip club. You're a hip hop artist. They're the NBA worst. players. You know what you could easily do? Go to Century City Mall, holler at 10 girls, and get the same exact feeling that you wanted to get instead of paying $2,500 exactly. for something that you need to go into another room where freaking dude who looks like Sinbad is just watching your every move yep. and just studying you <laughs> and being like, oh, you better not try some shit. The strip club might be the worst. That, that might be worse than the regular club, man. I do think it's worse. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I've seen athletes, musicians, all that in the strip club, and it's wild. They waste a lot of money there. A lot of money. A lot of money there. Yeah. I want to own a strip club. Like, I was just yeah, speaking, <laughs> speaking to my manager. Go in with that. Mayweather. He has one in Vegas, yeah, right? Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it's just money. It's a lot of money there.